Hello, and on behalf of the Archdiocese of San Francisco, welcome to Mosaic. We all know that we are living in the age of digital communication, which is the latest variety of mass communication. Once upon a time, not long ago, mass communications had to be delivered to a fixed device, the radio, the TV in the living room, the telephone on the stand. But communication now is everywhere and constant and endlessly variable. And the powerful, compact, wonderful devices on which we receive communications and send out our own are portable and, in fact, ever-present. We have them with us all the time, and they're capable of helping us with business, education, personal relations, and sheer entertainment. Young people especially, we like to say, live on their devices. Our guest today is Samantha Yee, a writer, editor, and an adept in this digital realm, a Catholic writer and speaker who has said, if that's where young people are living, that's where we have to reach them. And reach them with what? As Samantha will show, we reach them with writing, with art, with beauty, with soul. After this brief break, please join us as we talk with San Francisco's own Samantha Yee about young digital Catholics today. Hello, and thank you for joining us on Mosaic. My guest today is Samantha Yee. She's a native of San Francisco, I think grew up mostly in Redwood City. A young woman, as you can see, I believe she's 24 years old. Samantha, we've just met, and I'm so um, overwhelmed by your resume, I'm not quite <laughs> sure what your main activity is. You're a writer, you're an editor, you're a professional digital um, entrepreneur, you're a student at UC Berkeley. Can you give me a yeah. picture of what you're doing? <laughs> well, first and foremost, I'm a student at UC Berkeley. I'm, I'm working on research right now regarding James Joyce's Ulysses. Okay. Um, beyond that, I, I write, I edit, I do social media for Catholic companies and organizations. I speak to youth groups, college centers. I, I'm kind of all over the place. I write blog posts for various companies. I advise people on how to use Instagram and Pinterest. Yes, you, you would consult on social media with people, but I noticed also you're an excellent writer. I mean, just looking at your first, oh, yeah. your, your web page, it says, Hi, I'm Sam. I write, edit, and do social media for Catholics from foggy San Francisco. And you have you know, links to various networks of artists, writers, and so on. Mm -hmm. And as I click through and look at all these, I'm discovering, I think, a world that's not known to me too well, which is young Catholic professionals, artists and writers, and marketers and so on, who are on the internet doing what they do in the service of their Catholic faith. Yes. You seem to be involved with, with all these people. Everyone I mentioned, <laughs> you're already working for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's... It's very interesting to be able to use my Catholic faith to work with all these different companies. And some of the ones that are listed on my site are The Living Person, One Secret Mission, um, The Catholic Woman. Uh, I've also worked with Pal Campaign and Just Love Prince and Net Ministries. There's all these different groups of Catholics that I've been able to work with through the Internet because of the gifts that I have. And I've seen your published poems on some of these sites, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's lots of non-bylined material that you <laughs> write for fee, because I believe you make yeah. your living as a professional writer and editor. You're paying your rent and tuition at UC Berkeley for your academic career. And yeah. it sounds like you're a very active sort of Catholic evangelist or, or speaker. Um, I think you, in a typical day, you mentioned last Friday was, <laughs> I said, Samantha, how do you spend a day? What happened? Yeah. Tell me again about last Friday. Oh, yes. Last Friday. <laughs> last Friday, I woke up at 6 a.m. Uh, and took the BART from Berkeley to San Francisco to meet with Seth of One Billion Stories at 7.30 a.m. for coffee. He... Um, and One Billion Stories is? Yeah, he runs a a company that makes videos and tells the stories of the one billion Catholics in the world. Um, he uses both video, Instagram, um, and I think he's moving into podcasts as well, to 
really just help people understand the faith through the eyes of the people who are living it. Um, and so we had, we had a little chat, <laughs> and right after that, I had to take Bart back to Berkeley for my classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and immediately following my classes in the morning, I had to take um, Amtrak, which is a train from Berkeley to Sacramento, which was a two hour long ride um, because I was speaking at the Newman Center in Sacramento uh, to the college students there to talk and share my testimony while they had adoration and praise and worship. Um, I also got after that, got to talk to a group of Catholic mommy bloggers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mommy bloggers are what? Moms who are at home and working on the internet and giving their creative uh, endeavors there? Yeah, so there's this whole group of Catholic moms who are blogging about it and talking about how they share the faith with their children and live liturgically. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's just funny because there's there's a stereotype that there's this Catholic mom with five children and they take their kids to daily mass, <laughs> um, but it's it's very cool to see how they're living their faith at home um, in a different way than I am. And they're supporting each other. This is interesting because uh, one thinks of the internet as you're going to your favorite places and staying in your little circle, yeah. but as I as I look at what you touch through your internet presence, there's a, or a sort of organic network of Catholics that are doing various things. I, I noticed the, the photographic or video thing called um, One Secret Mission, mm -hmm. and they had a video about what they do, about their photography. What is their practice? What do they do with their photographs? They basically create this stock photo collection for Catholics, okay. um, whether that's for churches, or various ministries to use on social media or mm -hmm. in other capacities um, so that we have a resource mm -hmm. to evangelize the faith through good photography. Now, I, I handle a website. I'm looking for photography. I haven't heard of one billion, st uh, oh, I mean, sorry, the secret, secret mission. mission. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, here, here's an interesting thing. You, they have a video, and you wrote the, um, the script to their script. video. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I don't have it right here. I was going to read it. Yeah, here it is. Very interesting. You combine artistry and theology in this, and this is what the narrator reads on the video. Mm -hmm. And you wrote this. You are an artist. You see things differently. Where others see an ordinary sunset, you see a masterpiece. You bring beauty into an otherwise dark world because you are an artist. It's what you do. You create because you were made in the image and likeness of a creator. Yeah. You know how to tell stories because you've heard the greatest story ever told. You are both the artist and the art, the creator and the created. The act of creating speaks to the very core of who you are because he passed the creative spark to you. That's very good writing, very simple and very effective, it seems to me. So our, I believe that you, people reach out to you when they see your writing to ask you to come mm -hmm. to help to work to give talks to youth and so on yeah i i feel like i really don't promote myself i just have my personal social media accounts but i somehow still get tons of emails from different companies and organizations who who want me to work with them because i think i i capture the catholic essence while also providing good communication and good writing i, I think so too Let's take a brief break and we'll come back and talk more with Samantha Yee about digital communications today. Hello, our guest today is Samantha Yee, a San Francisco native and a writer and editor. Samantha, we should begin with a little bio. I didn't really ask you about your upbringing. <laughs> you have... I have three younger brothers. Three younger I brothers. I was born in San Francisco. I grew up in the Bay Area. I don't know. I don't know what else you want to know. Well, you went to high school at? Notre Dame in Belmont. Okay. It's an all-girls Catholic high school. And um, you mentioned to me that your mother is, works uh, for the church in some parish uh, yeah, both, occupation. Both my parents work for the church. My father works for the chancery, uh, for the Archdiocese of San Francisco, and my yeah. mother works at the parish level doing liturgy and music. So I very much grew up in this world where you, you serve the church. <laughs> that's, very, that's very interesting. And I, I think you lapsed from your faith at a certain point when you were a young bit, in college. Yes. 
um, and then found what you call a reversion to it. How did that come about? Yeah, I, when I first started college at Cal, I was really at the place that a lot of young people are at where they're just trying to figure out who they are and how they fit into the world. And for me, I didn't think faith was going to be a part of that. I had, I had just grown up in the church and to me I'd seen a lot of the politics and drama behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't think that was going to be part of my life. <laughs> I, I remember telling people in high school that there's no way I'm going to be Catholic as an adult. Okay. <laughs> but going in with that mindset into Cal, I tended to look for happiness and purpose and in all the wrong places and, and things that were only temporary. And I finally found a solid place, a, a, a solid place to place my identity through my Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really just ended up reverting because I had gone to a Steubenville conference in San Diego, which is... That's the Catholic college that's in... Um uh, Ohio. Ohio, So yeah. Franciscan okay. University of Steubenville started these conferences for high schoolers. And I was no longer a high schooler at that point, but I, I credit a lot of my reversion to it just because I was exposed to adoration. And that was the first time I shared my testimony. And because of that, I started to see how the pieces fit together and how God had worked in my life. But beyond that, I was connected to all these holy people, young people who were living their faith, and that was not something I had seen before. Um, we, we would go to In-N-Out late at night and just talk about brown scapulars, and I was like, who are these people? There are these things for young people. Theology on Tap is one, I think, yeah. or you have to be 21, I think, to go in a bar for that. But yeah, you, you developed an adult set, a young adult set of friends, and you sort of came back to the church. But you're, you, you apparently wanted to write from the age of five and have been doing yeah. so. So, <laughs> so I, I know you have testimonials from marketers and people on your website, and you write dynamite ad copy, but I've also seen a couple of your poems published online, and those were striking as well. So you seem to have yeah. all the tools as a writer. And you mentioned adoration, and you told me that the recent Holy Week uh, at Easter was a big spiritual time for you. Mm -hmm. This past Holy Week, I had the opportunity to play Mary in a Living Stations of the Cross in... Uh, we were basically walking from Pier 39 to Girdelli Square in San Francisco. And it was this highly trafficked, touristy area. And I'm dressed as Mary, and there's this guy carrying the cross um, on Good Friday. And, and for me, that was just a very powerful experience to enter into the passion in that way and to take on the role of Mary and to see the crucifixion and the passion through her eyes. I, I think that's one of the, uh, the benefits of drama and theater and yeah. performance is embodying the person, embodying Mary. You yeah. had that experience. Good. Can I ask you to, to read the poem that of you course. wrote? Yeah, so I had this poem called A Sword Pierced Heart that was published on Good Friday at the Grotto Network, which is run by the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. My sweet boy, the fruit of my vine, how could I have known when I was told a sword would pierce this heart of mine? In your moments of woe and despair, I was there. Your blood, sweat, and tears in a garden on that dark night reminded me of a time when I bled and sweat for you beneath the starlight. It's a sorrowful mystery how this became our history. Your wails at the scourge echoed a young mother's wails when you were yet to emerge. For love, I would willingly suffer, but to watch you, that's far tougher. The king of the Jews, they said, and they placed a crown of thorns upon your head. The first crown you wore was the flesh of my womb, a baby arriving at an inn with no room. I remember when I first carried you, you wrapped your hand around my finger, my greatest joy and my greatest sorrow too. As you carry the cross up to a hilly plain, I long to hold you in my arms again. You lay naked, except for a piece of cloth on a piece of wood that served as an animal feeding trough. At Golgotha, you lay naked on a piece of wood on a Friday they later called good. My sweet boy, your blood turned to wine. How could I have known when I was told a sword would pierce this heart of mine? How could I have known as you learned to crawl that you would be the salvation of us all? That's very, very nice. That's very, it really reads, it really speaks to the reader. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Yeah, the connections are between the sorrowful mysteries and the birth of Jesus. Yeah. 
um, the, the crucifixion, resurrection, and his birth at Christmas. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. And you've written um, uh, Instagram posts and various other things for, for Catholic groups that want a presence on the internet. Yeah. You offer your services because, you know, many people want to communicate but don't know how to write, don't know how to edit, and don't know how to script. Yeah, and you that's do, very true. and you do things for them. I think that's that's fascinating. But you have yeah. high art in you as well. And can you tell me briefly what your academic research is about? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, my area of expertise is biblical and medieval poetry. Okay. Um, looking at Christian, the Christian mystics and Song of Songs. But right now I'm working on a research project uh, that takes James Joyce's Ulysses. Mm -hmm. um, he's an awesome Irish poet and writer, and looks at the role of writer as a sort of Catholic priest and, and the act of writing fiction as a consecrating of the sacred. Okay. Writing as a sacred art. That's mm -hmm. very interesting. And with James Joyce as your... As your uh, I know. <laughs> interesting fella. Thank you. We'll <laughs> talk about that some more. We'll be back in a moment with more with Samantha Yee and digital Catholicism. <laughs> Welcome back. We're talking about the internet and uh, about young people. Now, Samantha, I ride mm -hmm. the BART every day and everyone on the BART is glued to his uh, mobile device. Yeah. And I wonder often what they're doing. And uh, having met you, it's possible that some of those people are looking at their Catholic <laughs> messages and sending messages back and forth. But I wanted to talk to you in general about the state of the internet and the state of young people. If we say, as I think you've said to me, that's where the young people live today, and if you want to reach them for good or for ill, that's where you reach them. Mm -hmm. And you want to reach them for good. So we hear that they're addicted to the Internet. We hear that they're um, solipsistic. They're in their room alone with their favorite materials. What is your view of this tool, of this, of this uh, universal tool, as you call it? Yeah. I, I like calling it a universal tool because the word Catholic means universal. That's true. It does, yes. So I think social media is definitely a way to expand the universality of the church and to connect me to people all over the world. I like to view social media as a place of encounter, um, a place to meet people where they're at and to really have one-on-one -on -one interactions with them, but also to share my heart and be vulnerable and to have them do the same. It's also just where the people are, if, if you think about anything consistent that young people do today, it's that they are on social media every single day for several hours at a time. That's, that's where they live, that's where they are. Yes, and you know, I think s studies, I mean, reputable studies have said, look, the young people are not reading anymore. They're not picking up a book and so on. They're not good at reading. I, in a layman's term, sort of expect that if you're looking at copy or content or whatever you call it, that you're reading every day. But do you find that there's, uh, you find you have to make things simple or... I don't tone myself down. Okay. <laughs> as, as an academic and as a scholar, I tend to use big words a lot. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't tone that down. And people are reading it because sometimes they'll comment on specific parts of the things that I've said, whether about my own life or my insights on maybe a gospel reading. Um, so I know that they're reading it. And it's... I, I don't think that we have anything to worry about with, with the young people. They're still taking in good information and they're still thinking about how they can contribute to the world and they want to do good in the world. And we see that so strongly. Um, well, let me ask you this too, because again, surveys or newspaper stories tell me that the practice of religion is diminishing among yeah. younger people. On the survey, they answer they have no religion and so on. What's, what's your view of, of all that? You seem to be part of a very active core of solid yeah. Catholic people. I think there's a whole world on the internet that people have no idea about. There's tons of amazing Catholic organizations and ministries that are working to build community online and even in person. Uh, one of the ones I love is Bless Is She. They work specifically with women. Um, they have reflections on the daily mass readings as well as in-person lunch chats. Really? And this is based physically somewhere or? 
I mean, is it local? all over. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can take you can take their blesses she brunches or lunches anywhere, or you can take their Bible studies and do that anywhere. I think it's just using the tool of the internet to connect people. Yeah, no, you've opened me up to several new things. For instance, I saw a, a couple of blogs of yours on a site called The Catholic Woman, mm -hmm. and I signed up for the newsletter. So now I get the, <laughs> the newsletter from The Catholic Woman, and I, I know something about Catholic women I didn't know before. So you are um, donating your services to many of these people. Sometimes, yes. But you're also, you're also an organized uh, and, I think, ambitious professional. Mm-hmm. It's a very interesting combination of, of things. And let me ask you this. Where would you see yourself being in 10 years? Would you be <laughs> a, a teacher, an academic, an evangelist? What? I have no idea. Okay. It's just wherever God can use my talents. I, I would love to work with people in real life, in real ministry. Um, I love the relational, boots-on-the-ground type of work that happens usually on a parish level mm -hmm. because I think you really work with these people and work with children and teens and young adults and, and see them progress and grow in the faith. Um, but I also just love the writing part of it. I love media communications, and I think that's really how connections are being formed nowadays in my life. There's so many friends I've made through Instagram. There's so many jobs I got through Instagram. It's, it's insane to think about. And so, if, if for old fuddies like me, would you reassure us that the kids are not wasting their time yeah. completely on the internet? What? Oh, the kids are all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think with anything, you have to be prudent and exercise self-control. Anything can become an addiction and can be bad for you. But I think there are a lot of good things that can come out of social media. Um, from my own experience alone, there's several people who have reached out to me. Um, who have told me just reading my Facebook and Instagram posts has been the reason why they started going to Mass again. Yeah, and you're, not, you're modest about that. I mean, to say your story is interesting, but it's not about you. You're conveying oh, no. to these people something beyond you, and they're, they're responding to it. Yeah, there's definitely something way bigger than me, and I think even people who, who don't subscribe to my religious beliefs acknowledge that there's something that's good and wholesome and true about the things that I'm doing, and they they're attracted to that and they admire that and they want some of that. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, Samantha, it's been great to meet you and yeah. thank you for coming and talking with us and good luck with your academic work and wherever you wind up, it'll be a blessed spot because you're there, seriously. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on Mosaic. We'll see you next time.